Look at that. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here today at today's press conference for Gemini Man. What did you think of the movie? There you go. Yes, we're going to have a great conversation today. So thank you so much for being here. I'll start off with a bunch of questions, and then I will turn it over to you. So let's, without further ado, bring out the two-time Oscar-winning director of Gemini Man, Ang Lee. Let's bring out, let's bring out, uh, seriously, the, the greatest showman, the greatest producer of movies. And he's here, he produced Gemini Man. Please welcome Jerry Bruckheimer. <laughs> you have a fan backstage, I'm guessing, right? Great to see you. I see you right here. Uh, the guy who's whooping and hollering, let's bring him out. Uh, I'm not sure if he's the younger version or the older version, but he looks amazing anyway. Please welcome Will Smith. <laughs> now we know, the gig is up. Ladies and gentlemen, please bring out Will's co-star, Clive Owen. Energy is off the hook. <laughs> this is going to be a great press conference. Yeah, hold that thought for one second. For one second, please welcome visual effects supervisor Bill Westenhofer. Last but certainly not least, please welcome Weta Visual Effects Supervisor Guy Williams. Right. Okay, we're good. Oh, it's everybody. We are right, good, right, and right. it's time to rock on this. Uh, yes. Woo! <laughs> Welcome. The energy. Yes. This, I, I'm all about the energy. Will. Yes. So no, this, that's this what is it great. is. It's all about the energy. Energy. The yes. energy. It's all about the film, and and really, uh, Jerry. I know that this uh, this screenplay, the story, has been going on for for a very very long time. Um, when did you come on? What made you fall in love with the story? And what was sort of the, the story at that time and how did it evolve to what we now have now seen? Well, it's been at least 10 years that we've been working on this. And uh, the issue was that technology hadn't caught up with the creativity of the writer. So we had to wait for these gentlemen over here and Ang Lee to figure out how to get this movie made. We did some unsuccessful versions of this in testing and it looked pretty awful. So we kind of put it on the shelf until Aang said, we, I have a whole new way of doing this. And he said, I'm going to create something really special. And he certainly did. Okay. Uh, what were the first conversations that you had? Like, what made you, like, sort of see, hey, you know, Ang Lee is the guy to direct this movie. And Ang, what made you say, I am the guy to direct this movie? Uh, of course I'm the guy. <laughs> 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 try, to, try to talk like right. real, like... No, that's the that's Ang's inner gangster rapper. That's the that's what I've learned in spending time with. He has an inner gangster rapper that every once in a while just comes out. <laughs> well, uh, it, it's just too attractive, so that make me like, yes. Uh, each time I make a movie, I have that feeling. I I am the guy. There's uh, nobody else. This is my movie. You know, it, it, you make that f connection, some the visceral connection. I do feel this one. Actually, the first person talked to me was uh, David Ellison uh, in his office at, 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 at Skydance. As soon as I hear a clone, a younger version, it's I just feel I'm old enough to deal with this stuff. Uh, like looking back, uh, what am I? When you see a clone <laughs> and we're just a piece of jeans, why do we exist? All this uh, well, philosophical stuff hit me first. Then what kind of fun we're going to have. Mm -hmm. And I know we're getting into a digital world and how we create it. And I've experienced uh, the Hulk 20 years ago. And not too long ago, uh, I experienced the tiger. 
in Life of Pi, in my head, this is within reach. But I know as with human face, uh, you're playing with fire. It's, it's pretty, you're, you're, you're in a God's realm. Like, it's pretty scary, but at the same time, it's pretty exciting. So I signed on. The first time we talk is, I said, I want to do it, but I want to have a new approach, and I want to try a different media. Um, so I invited Jerry and, and the whole Skydance people into my uh, New York uh, editing room to see a reel of uh, Billy Lynn's long halftime walk. I said, this is the media I want to do. <laughs> I want to approach in a digital way with Junior. And then they f fell for it. So that, that's how we started. <laughs> I, I was quite surprised. <laughs> I said, after Billy Lynn, somebody like, here we go. Uh, I got to give them a lot of credit, the support they have. For, for this project. You know, some shots take a year, that while we're shooting, we have to turn over before they see anything. They're like, okay, we trust this guy. Um, you know, well, well I want to ask, uh, you know, it, ultimately so much has been written and talked about already with like the technology and how it breaks ground and new ba breaks boundaries, which it absolutely does, and we'll get to that in a second, but you know, the script is the thing. Mm -hmm. so, so what was it like for you when you read this the first time that made you just go, I'm in. You know, I just, I loved the, 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 the philosophical idea that we all plant the seeds of our own destruction. Like we are our own worst enemies. <laughs> like, you know, the, that we make choices and we, we make uh, decisions in our lives that set things in motion that we can't blame other people for. And that the, the battle with trying to overcome our karma, you know? Right. And I just thought it was a really uh, clever and creative way to say that we are the architects of our ultimate uh, rise or fall. And to be able to do that in this way, and it's a big part of why I love uh, science fiction, uh -huh, uh -huh. Be, because you can put those things under really wild visual uh, landscapes. Well, Clive, you know, when, when you look at the way the movie was being made while it was being shot, you know, like when I think of uh, the, some of the movies you've done in the last, you know, 20 years, when I look at movies like Children of Men, which is like, you know, just such a great movie. and. Woo! <laughs> you know, but also something, you know, <laughs> breaking the ice. Uh, I love it. Bring it. Do it. Um, but, no, 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 it's great. Uh, but also like shoot him up, which is very, uh, you know, visceral action heavy film. You know, what did you see as like the challenges with, with making this movie that were different from the other films that you've made? Um, I, I think it's like a, a brilliant coming together of something that's, you know, hugely, it's, it's full of action, it's a great premise, it's a, it feels like a huge movie, but it's also, you know, it's about characters and it's about drama and it's very intimate and personal. And I think that Mr. Ang Lee is the ultimate director for a movie like this because He's on top of all the technology, he's on top of what huge drama is, but he's also incredibly artistic and specific and detailed. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, I was just hugely excited the minute I, I got sent the script, yeah. You know, when, when the stories like you were talking about, like uh, just how, you know, Jerry, when you got jumped in and how the technology wasn't quite there and, and all the tests that you have been doing, uh, I want to ask, like, what was the breakthrough moment? What was the aha, we got it moment when you said, we can do this? That's for you. Yes. <laughs> You're still waiting for that. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, we, uh, when Aang first uh, came to me and we talked about how we were going to do this, we did look at what had been done in the past and where the technology was. Uh, there had been some pretty close attempts uh, in Rogue One and uh, uh, Blade Runner the year before, and we thought that things have matured and he, it was kind of very similar to what he'd, he'd done. I, I worked with him on Life of Pi and he came to me and said, uh, can we do for a human what we did for the tiger? So we looked and said, technology is close enough that if we put the same determination into it, we thought we felt confident that we could do that. And, you know, honestly, uh, if something doesn't scare me a little bit, it's, it's not really worth doing. So there, there was some fear involved, but we did feel confident that the the technology was close enough that with a raw determination, with the, the incredible skill and talent of the people at Weta, that we could do this. 
I was just going to add that um, we've been toying around with digital humans a lot with, with stunt work, but uh, to really break this barrier, what we needed was a project that, that supported it. You know, the, the commitment not just to have a couple of shots where you want to have a guy doing something falling off a building, but, but truly have a digital human standing in front of a uh, camera acting and resonating with the audience and delivering the lines and, and serving the story. Um, and this film was the perfect opportunity to actually be, be able to bring it all together. And, and I really want to, you know, I've been uh, doing a lot of in, inter, interviews and, and I think people don't completely understand the depth of what, what you guys uh, have attempted, attempted and accomplished here, right? So th this, th Junior is not de-aging. Right. So it's not my face. And then they smoothed out my face to make it look younger. It's a 100 percent digital human in the same way that the tiger in the life of Pi uh, for, you, you know, they used a real tiger to understand the movement. But in in the, the movie, when you're seeing the, the tiger you're seeing a hundred percent digital recreation of a tiger. This is not me de-aged. It's a 100% digital interpretation of me. It's a digital character. It's the first digital human, right? So it's, it is actually a spectacular thing to be able to make people feel emotion in that way, capturing the youthful eyes. That's the thing for me that was so amazing. It was the hardest part that me and Aang were talking about. It's like, you can't, you can't fake innocence, right? So it's like, you know, I was, I was, I was doing an a, a interview the other day and I was trying to explain it. And it's like, as a young actor, it's easier to play older, but older, it's, it's difficult to impossible to play younger. Once you know some stuff, it's in your eyes, right? Like, it's in your cells once you know some stuff. So to try to have eyes that unknow like sex, like once you've had sex, you know, you, you, just, you walk different, it's in your back, you know? Yeah. <laughs> You know, so their job in the creating of a digital human was to be able to sell that innocence and that and that youth and to be able to sell a digital digital human in that way. And I think you guys have done spectacular work. I want to say that uh, Will's being very humble in this one aspect because there is, despite all that, there is no magic button that we could push to say make him look young. He had <laughs> he had to ingest that and be himself at 23. Yeah. You know, we could we could put the the look and make sure he looked like his 23 year old self, but the performance and the innocence had to come from him. So that was a. But I, I want to ask, okay, so, so this, this te technology to do that, okay, mm -hmm. but the, the trick here is that it has to be invisible. Right. Right? You can't look at it and go, that's a great special effect. Right, right, right. You have to go, that's Will Smith. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So how, how did you make sure that you always made that element invisible? Uh, I have this whole plan of uh, first we see him with sunglasses in bright sun, uh, sunlight, but he seems to see a ghost. It was an action sequence. Very exciting, so hopefully you accept that existence. Then I have a shot of an intimate moment. You get into the world of being a real person. And then we move on, but then the trailer seems to give everything away in <laughs> one minute. That <laughs> got me really, really nervous. Uh, I, I think uh, everything we talk about, actually, that was the easier part. The, the people call it technology. It's really an artistic endeavor. We, we work with everybody's imagination, collective self-consciousness. So that's, that's the real enemy, a challenge. Um, the, the science these guys did was mind-boggling. When they showed me what age does it, what every emotion, what, they can talk it better uh, that way. Um, it is just mind-boggling to study into the science of aging and our structure and how our emotion connect with every tissue in our body. Uh, it's just mind-boggling, but that's like, I would say 10% of the work. When everything is absolutely right, believable, it's not really believable, because it's too correct. Just to mess it up, so we think that's the, the movie he used to play, but it's a different person in this media, in that situation. 
that was uh, a lot of scratching head and very expensive process to try it again and again with a huge, a huge data keep running. Uh, I, I think that's just play along people's ability, as, as you said. Um, there's no law to it. You change an angle, you change some lighting, change your scene. At, like the li life of Pi, that tiger. And then I remember it's one day in the ninth month to post, like, we got it. From now on, we know that tiger. There's just never such a moment here. It come and go, come and go. You know, it's just like, it's whimsical. <laughs> Jerry, I want to ask, so, so here's a film, it's not, it's not a sequel, it's not a prequel, it's not a Star Wars movie, it's not a superhero movie, it's not a reboot, it's not a sequel of a reboot, you, you, you get where I'm going. It uh, should have been on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on a very, very, very big TV. Um, but Jerry, like, how, how rewarding was it to really nurture this film along these last, you know, more than 12 years or so? Well, it's always great when you find a piece of material in love with and you can bring it to an audience and hopefully they'll enjoy it the way you enjoyed when you read it. And you have to understand that when they talk about digital Will, it's his performance. So it's 100% Will's performance on a digital full body. It's not just they replace the head, it's everything. So he wore a, a head thing and it's, so he played two characters in this movie. He did first the Henry part of it and then he turned around and did the Will, the junior part of it. So it was, it was grueling for him to do play two parts every single day that, that character, two characters were on screen together. So you have to understand the accomplishment that not only Weta did and Aang did, but his performance is outstanding for two parts. It's so difficult, draining. <laughs> but Will, you know what, I want to ask you about this. You know, you are, you are playing yourself um, how do you, you know, when you're watching, you're seeing how Junior, there's, there's definitely a, a drive and ambition and energy, you know, there's that word again, energy, but there's also a, a naivete about him, you know, because he's just not, he's not, you know, world weary like, like, like Henry is. So how did you make sure that you separated your performance as Henry from your performance as Junior? Well, what, what was really uh, great that Ang did is uh, before we even met, he had gone through all of my uh, filmography and he grabbed things that, uh, you know, he grabbed uh, Fresh Prince, he grabbed uh, Six Degrees of Separation, it was uh, Bad Boys, Bad Boys Independence, Day. Independence Day, Men in Black. And, he, you know, he grabbed the scenes and, you know, he was sort of walking me through moments and, uh, you know, he, he would look and he'd say, uh, I love very much what you have done in this moment here in Six Degrees of Separation. Um, in Bad Boys, this one was good, but don't ever do this in my movie. <laughs> yeah, you know, so we, we sort of created... Um, uh, a language of my, my the old characters and the and the moments of what he was trying to capture. There was there was um, it's funny. There's a thing be, before you learn how to act. There's a there's a powerful thing that you have from not knowing, and it's really difficult to re recapture the, that, that not knowing. And we, we found these moments, we found these really honest uh, moments in, in some of, the, some of the, the, my early work. Um, uh, but I would say of, of all the things, that was the, the, the most difficult part. It, it almost felt like learning how to do some bad acting, like go back to bad <laughs> acting, right? Because there's an honesty before you actually learn where the light is and you learn how to stand and you, you learn what makes people clap for movie stars in the, <laughs> you know, in the theater. And it's like letting, letting go of all of that stuff was, was, was uh, really difficult. You know, Clive, the scene uh, you know, where we have, we have Henry and we have Junior in the same scene. And this, you know, it's a very human scene. Everyone is interacting with each other. Uh, what was, take us through what this like, what, what it was like to make a scene like that when you have Will, and, but you also have Junior in the scene, but maybe Will wasn't, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, 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 we got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, um, well, something good, Clive. My, my, 
<laughs> my, m most of my stuff was with young Will. So, you know, we did... Uh, and it's true, like, you, you can talk about all the technology and how amazing it is, but unless you've got the acting and the drama and the script and people are feeling things, I don't know how much that counts for, really. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, you know, so a lot of the time I was acting with Will with this huge head rig on, which was, you know, for all the stuff they're going to do later. But I have to say, the, the truth of the matter is, because he's so focused and so, you know, such a good actor, all of that disappears very quickly. And I don't even see it. I have to avoid it because he. <laughs> but I, but, but I, there was a thing with cameras on. So every time we had a scene together, I had this long thing and it had cameras on. So we'd be talking and we'd be doing. <laughs> so, you know, how could you do this to me? <laughs> but, but honestly, all of that soon disappears. And you end up, it's like you, you're acting a scene like you act any scene. Like you. You're focusing on what's important and, and you act as you would in, in a, any other movie. There's just this huge operation going on around it. You know, one of the, the high points of the film, action-wise, is the bike chase. And there's, a, there's this part of the film where, where you're following uh, Henry, you know, like it's all sort of one take. So again, this goes back to like the biggest challenge of the film to look invisible, that you're not... It's not, you're now drawing attention to like the junior aspect of it, but it's still a great, great scene. So what were the challenges to, to really bring that scene to full fruition because it is such a visceral edge of your seat moment? I think what was really cool is that, uh, especially with this, with this format, it shows so much detail. And because of that, we went to great lengths to film as much as we possibly could. There was a, this, this camera rig is this 80 pound uh, uh, combination to, to film native stereo and it's put on the back of this e-bike. So the, the guy who's driving the camera is as skilled, if not more than the stunt guys that are driving behind it, tearing through traffic, popping up on walls. But we filmed that for real. Uh, we had stunt, stunt riders and then we went back and we'd replace uh, Junior's torso to put, uh, to put Junior on there. But we tried to do, you know, only use CGI where we had to. But we, there were some fun things as well because you are in the moment. Aang exp you know, experimented with what is it like if you are on that bike uh, and you're experiencing it. And that, that, those are things you haven't seen before. Um, go ahead. I was just gonna say, one of the things, in, in the process of creating a young will, we not being able to go back in time 30 years in the past and do everything we need to do to acquire a young will, we start with current day will. Um, so we build that, that digital human up to a certain spec and then we move from there to get to the young one. What that allowed us to do in the bike scene that was kind of fun was, we, we were able to say, don't worry about how close you get to the stunt performer, right? You know, have him drive right up into the camera and we'll just, we'll replace what we need to replace so it becomes Will Smith. So it, it just makes for such a, a, an interesting uh, stunt scene to be able to see your actor playing both roles and, and not just constantly trying to look away from camera so you can't tell that it's not the same guy. And, and we I, wouldn't cut either. That was another really fun thing is that, you know, a lot of action sequences are a lot of cuts to high trickery. We, we didn't have that, uh, that luxury. We extended takes and we had to, you know, for the same thing, to allow your following uh, Henry on the bike through this alleyway and then you come all the way to the end and he comes right to camera. Well, you know, you, there was a stunt driver for, for the bulk of that, but then we found a way to get Will's performance in at the very end as well and just make it one seamless thing. Which and that's fun. the thing that, that's, uh, that, that I love also. And because everyone is looking at young, uh, the, the junior character, everyone is watching, uh, people don't actually realize there are full digital old Henry shots in the film also. So there, there, are, there are moments when, you know, full frame, you know, close up shots are, are oh, old. I'm, I'm, it's hard for me. I'm like, young Will, old Will. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> young me, old me. It's like, so that there are full, there are full uh, digital shots of old Will, old Henry in, the, in the, the film also. And that's when you can really tell that it works when people aren't thinking about it. It, it is a, a, a full buy. Yeah, you know, Will, uh, uh, Ang and, and Jerry, I want to ask about, about shooting 120 frames per second. Um, why go that way? And you know, for a lot of people who aren't like super, super tech savvy with sort of thing, like what, what exactly does that mean? What was the goal with the 120 frames per second? I think the goal is to bring a new experience to an audience. Uh, we have, you know, we haven't made huge technological advances in cinema for quite a while. I mean, we went from black and white to color. We're digital, mostly digital now. 
uh, so the image is clear, but this is a huge, huge jump as far as what an audience is going to experience. It's immersive. It puts you right in there with the actors and adult. It takes a little while for you to get used to it because you're not used to seeing something with such clarity ever. So Ang really is, is pioneering this technology because we have to advance cinema. I mean, people are so comfortable in their homes because they have these big televisions and everything is interesting that, that we're making for, for television. There's a lot of good, good material on television now. So we have to have technology that you can't actually see in your home to, to get people back to the theaters. And the cameras and, that you used, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, in order to, it, it, it's so clear, so it, it, you, it responds the way reality responds to your eye, and that was the attempt to make it a much more realistic uh, experience, so much so, it's so crystal clear that the actors couldn't wear makeup. Because when the, cam when the camera comes in, you could see makeup on on our our faces. So it was it was uh, you know I had to drink a lot of water. You know, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't afford a breakout. Yeah. <laughs> the cameras that you used. To to me, uh, people talk about clarity. To me, is really the sharpness. I think when you're doing 3D to allow people to be more immersive, to mimic the experience, the, how we experience in, in real life, so you feel you're, it's real, you're in it, uh, to invite them to that world, it's not just uh, clear, it's sharp. It, it, the way you uh, process the Im image through two eyes uh, with an angle, it's different than when we used to watch movie, which is more dreamy. Oh, it's lovely. It was the, the best thing happened to me, to anybody in our lives. But this is something new. When you want to experience the movie, then just watching it, um, when you're basking in that situation, I think your, 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 your mind needs to be sharper. You know, it just needs to be sharper in perception. Details, you have to be more accurate to even begin with. I think eventually we'll go to that abstract feeling like we do abstract feeling about a man's struggle with himself, but when you visualize it, when you play out, it, serves, it takes a lot of details and sharpness, even just the process in our head to believe that's real, like, like real life. So it, the frame rate needs to be raised. Uh, at least the basic is the stroke free. Because in life there's, no, there's blur, there's no stroke. It's not life life. Your eyes want to believe that's real, then you have to get rid of all those obstacles to allow them to get into that world. The really challenge is how do you make that movie? We don't know how to, we just try. <laughs> I hope it works. <laughs> uh, it's a new media. Uh, it's technology uh, related, but it's really a media. And we're trying to find a way to find a relationship with that media. I mean, clearly it's a, it's a movie that, that it's a, a absolutely like the ultimate big screen cinematic immersive experience like throughout the whole course of the film you are you're in it and uh i think that's a that's a, a testament to the film but but will so throughout the course of the making of the movie so you finally get to a point where the movie is far enough along where you're able to see whether it's a scene a work print or maybe the finished cut you sit down you watch the movie and you see junior what goes through your mind? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, was, it was really crazy. The first time I saw it, it was, <laughs> yeah. it was, it was, uh, it was chilling almost. It was a little scary because the first one I saw was uh, one of my favorite shots in the whole movie was uh, when, when uh, Henry flips Junior over in the catacombs and then puts the light up onto uh, Junior's face. And so that was one of the first like completed shots that I saw. And you, you know, it was it was a, a little bit surreal, a little bit weird, um, and then I started getting excited about all of the the, the possibilities, um, the young Will Smith, young Marlon Brando movie that could get made, you know, and uh, they could get made while I'm at home, which would be great, you know. <laughs> but there, it's a full 23 year old digital version of myself and my mind just started to go wild about 
uh, what you'd be able to do. Even the, even the action sequences, how the action sequences were done is uh, normally you do an action sequence and you know you can't actually punch somebody in the face so you know you take the shot and you go by and the actor goes ah you know and you go no no you missed you know so you move the camera and, and you keep going now what we do is we, you, what they were able to do with this technology you do the scene you do the swing and then they take the fist and actually put it on the face of the digital character and bend the face and throw the sweat and all of that. So when you're seeing those shots now, whereas we're, we're used to seeing misses with sound and blur, now you're seeing full shots in the same way you'd see in, in MMA, right? So it, it, was, a, it was a really um, a great new way to do to do the action and you do all the you know all these different variations and then they then the the, the stuntmen can do full takes and we can do full takes and then they'll be able to make the most visceral version of it when they when they get all of those assets in, into post so in terms of action I'm really uh, excited about the, the the use of this technology in the future well let's take questions from the audience Fred you're first you oh yeah here comes the mic <laughs> I will. Well, now I want to know if uh, the episode of Fresh Prince where Will's father comes to visit was one of Ang Lee's references for you. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, he, did, he didn't pull that one. He, he, uh, with, with, with the, the Fresh Prince, um, I think Ang, uh, he found it more interesting to show me what not to do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Was, uh, you crafted your movie career very carefully with science fiction movies that were inspired by the movies that were the biggest hits at the, block, at the box office at the time. While in this climate today, as Scott was describing with uh, franchises and reboots and everything, is a movie like Gemini Man the underdog? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, definitely uh, in, this new, in this new world. Uh, it's a whole lot... Uh, safer to 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 uh, from a, a financial standpoint to to make a part three of something uh, than it is to do something brand new from the ground up. But this that you know that's what uh, we were all excited about with this and what Ang kept saying and and why to push the envelope is to give give people a new reason uh, to to go to movie theaters to see something that you you can't see at home. Um, uh, in terms of, I think, for the first part of the question was for me, uh, it was Star Wars was the, the, the movie when I was growing up that absolutely, like, I was, I was stunned sitting at, after Star Wars ended. I couldn't believe that they could make me feel like that with, with a story and with, with the, these characters and, um, I think career-wise, the, the, the things I've been chasing are uh, Star Wars and Thriller uh, are the, the, the two pieces of entertainment that um, uh, I've always been hoping to make something that matches for others how I felt when, when I experienced those. Uh, got a question right over here? Yes. Yes, Rich McCain. Good to see you again, Will. Hello, sir. Anyway, this is for Mr. Lee and Mr. Bruckheimer. For years, there's been controversy about digital actors replacing real actors. I know you guys are familiar with that. So this film basically proves that it can be done. So how do you think the reaction is going to be with people like the union and folks like that that might feel a little threatened by this character? Uh, be, be careful with I, this question, eh? <laughs> <laughs> To me, uh, I have the same goal as this guy sitting over there. We want to be recognized, but uh, at the end of the day, the biggest praise we can have is nobody think about asking that. They just watch the, the movie uh, and, and watch the story of Junior uh, without thinking about it. But that's uh, very difficult to do. Uh, to the first part of the question, the, the scared, uh, I think for a long time we don't really have to. The digital one is a lot more expensive than this guy, so <laughs> it's not going to happen a lot. It is so hard, so risky, and so expensive. I mean, what, three times? Five times? Yeah, this guy's easy. <laughs> yeah, he's easy. You're right. <laughs> I've had Will for a long time. <laughs> Guy, yeah. The one thing I'd add there, though, is that 
<clears throat> even though there's a 23-year-old Will Smith on the frame, the performance was not created in the computer, right? That's, that's the point of distinction that a lot of people just don't remember is that every single take, even all those stunt falls that we did where we replaced the stunt uh, Will with the stunt performer, sorry, vice versa, um, we had Will acted out in the mocap stage. So the character, the performance comes from the actor. We, we, the digital creature, the digital character, the digital human does not replace the actor in that regard. Yeah, it, we, we did this it's more we did this yeah. than using a stuntman to play him. We always pretend something happened. Uh, we use substitutes to make believe, and this is the, like a new way to do it. Uh, yeah, it, we we did this for a reason because we had old Will Smith in the same frame with young Will Smith. So there's really no alternative. It's it's still forever going to be better to use a real actor when you can. This just allows you to do tell stories and do different things that wouldn't be possible otherwise. Okay, there's a question right up here in the front, if you have uh, the microphone. Uh, oh, oh, okay, no, no, all right. We'll come back to you, it's okay. Will snatched it out of his hand. You know, wow, it. damn. I, I'm hurry, that was your shoes, like, I'll hey, catch hey, yeah, thanks. <laughs> <You're done. laughs> Learn how to share, learn how to share. I'll come back. Will, can, can you just talk a little bit about, we, we find out the, the back history of both the young and the older Will. Can you talk about how you saw both of the way they were raised, making them the men they became? Mm -hmm. So that was uh, one, one of the, the major discussions that we, we were having in terms of nature versus nurture. And you know how, if you're genetically identical, um, how, how much does your life experience affect the things that you say and do and feel? Um, so we were trying to draw as you know, big a difference as, as possible as we could between the characters and Henry you know, you grew up in, in you know, pr brutal household and he had a, a tougher upbringing where uh, Junior had the perfect upbringing with Clive's character and uh, in, in, in Clive's character's uh, pursuit of the perfect human, he was trying to lay out the perfect experience for a young junior. So it was all of the right schools and he was only allowed to read the right books and he was only allowed to um, experience the, the best of what the nurturing uh, aspects of a home should be. So uh, in, in you know, drawing those distinctions, it was still interesting that it still came down to uh, you know, two men who had taken these gifts that they had and still turned them into things that were going to, uh, I'm blanking on what the line was, but that were still going to create nightmares and that were going to uh, you know, create uh, a, a horrible end uh, to, to this experience. So I don't, I don't know if that answers the question. It's pretty close. Final, yes. You. <laughs> you. Yeah. Hey. Hi, uh, Dennis from View TV Hong Kong. Um, first of all, congratulations. Great movie. I have a question for Anne and Will. So you guys mentioned that um, both of you like, watched the work of Will years ago together. So how was the experience like? Was it like fun or somehow like um, embarrassing maybe? And also for Will, what is your favorite work of Anne like, um, before? Have you ever uh, imagined yourself being like fighting like uh, coaching uh, Tiger or the Tiger in Love of Pi maybe? <laughs> working with Will? Go, yeah, uh, uh, we watched all of uh, the original work and uh, of my original work and was that fun? Dude, uh, no. <laughs> you know, there's, there's no fun at all with Ang Lee up on the edge of his chair watching everything you've ever done in every moment and breaking it down and describing it. Yeah, so that, I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that was fun. Uh, <laughs> but it was uh, in, in terms of being in a, in a, a film school environment, it was, it was fantastic. It was, it was uh, I, I grew as, a, as an actor and uh, as a human for the, the, the time that I was able to, to uh, spend with such an, an incredible artist as Ang Lee. How was that film school environment for you, Clive? Working with Will, but especially with Ang. 
Yeah, it was fantastic. It was a really, really great experience. I mean, as I said before, you know, it's a, it, we, we've talked a lot about the technology and the, you know, the huge sort of advancements that are being made, being made in film. But ultimately, th this man is an artist, and we'll talk about specific lines and details of character because, you know, as I said before, all of it counts for nothing if you're not invested in the drama of something. And so it feels like, you know, it's it's the he's the perfect man to do a film like this where, you know... And, and also, uh, we haven't really talked about the whole subject of, um, of cloning. I, 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 I read an article like four weeks ago in the New York Times about a, somebody cloning a cat mm -hmm. that is actually done and that this whole thing about cloning pets is becoming an ethical issue. And, you know, this, this film also brings up... We're not that far away from what the film is discussing really and it's it's coming fast and there are going to be huge ethical decisions and discussions that people are going to have to have that's what we need more people <laughs> the learning the, the learning is bilateral i have to say it flows both ways and every which way at some point you just feel this camaraderie it's like you're in a trench together sure and at some point you feel like only we understand each other is it us against the whole world. They don't know what we're in. It's actually a very selfishly wonderful feeling to work, you know, I cherish every moment I work with actors or crews or producers. You know, that's, that school is, uh, make me feel like I want to be a forever film student. You know, I just learn to do those things. That, that's the, the biggest reward in making those movies. You got the mic. I got it We're back. not taking it away this it time. <laughs> so there's a love-hate relationship with 3D. So how do you think, thank you. So how do you think audiences, especially older audiences, uh, will they embrace a new cinematic experience? So I want to hear from the filmmakers and also from the actor's point of view. Well, I think that the, the, the 3D is so subtle. It is, again, it feels like you're actually in the room with the actors. It gives dimension to their performances. It's not like the old 3D where you get eye strain, and that's all gone now. Uh, there's no headaches anymore. It's the way they've done it with, um, Anne can explain it, or Bill can explain it better than I can, but it's very comfortable to watch, and I hope the audience gets to, to experience it in 3D. Hi. Um Clive, you brought up cloning, and my question is, your character at some point talks about the issue of cloning in the film where you say, um, when you clone someone or when you recreate someone, you have an opportunity to not grieve any longer, to not lose the person that you love and have those experiences in life. And I just wanted to know from anyone who wants to answer, how do you think that you would feel if that became a possibility, if that became a reality, where if, not, if, if we're not cloning animals, we're now cloning human beings, and that becomes a reality where you no longer have to experience grief or loss. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, I know that was too <laughs> <deep>. Thanks. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thanks a lot for that. <laughs> wow, who wants to take that one? Ah. <laughs> uh, uh. I'm sorry, boo. I think we all have the, the, the human uh, quest to overcome our pain, right? So we're, we're all trying to figure out how to eliminate suffering uh, from our lives. And um, there, there was an interesting phrase I, I heard uh, the other day called, uh, it, it was, they said poisoned honey, that we reach for poisoned honey a lot in order to overcome our pain and suffering. And I, I, you know, when I think about cloning, and we talked about it a lot on this movie, and, you know, it's one of those scientific reaches that I think that um, the, we've already gone down the road, so there's, I'm sure there's absolutely things that have happened in cloning that we don't, we don't know about yet that we're going to find out, but my, my opinion is that cloning will uh, ultimately uh, pan out to, to be poisoned honey. Uh, it will be a reach that will uh, potentially come back and, and uh, bite humanity um, in a way that, that uh, we're, we're probably not considering fully. Okay, got time for two more questions, so hang on. You got the first. 
Jim Alexander here with Real Talker. Uh, Will, a question for you. You've been synonymous with the sci-fi and action genre for years. You've been kicking ass for decades, but has it come to a point where you start thinking about the next stage in your career with roles? You're not gonna be able to jump off buildings forever, you know, and, and but have you thought about what would you like to do next? What sort of genre of films? And I've seen kind of Clive transition slowly into that phase uh, himself, but have you thought about uh, what you would like next for you to be, what sort of genres and roles to take? Actually, you can jump off buildings forever now. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, exactly. These guys are gonna keep me jumping off buildings into my hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well um, beyond that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I think I, I think um, uh, more than just a, a, a transition in roles. It's as uh, you know, I turned fifty-one uh, last week, and I'm I'm really Woo! Yeah! Happy birthday. Woo! Hey. Hey. You, <laughs> you know, um, I mean, I'm experiencing a, a, you know, a, gen a transition in, in my life uh, more more than ever. I'm 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 seeing my role um, in the in the world as a as a uh, a role of service. You know, and in my in my younger days, um, I, it was it was ambition. You know, I wanted I wanted to win. I wanted to put points on the board. Um, and now I'm kind of growing into the position in my life where I'm kind of just uh, the, the, the main question that I ask myself before I do anything is how is this of service to the, the human family? Um, so with, with that prism, I'll, I'll be uh, making more and more uh, decisions in, in my life. Um, I love science fiction. I love uh, filmmaking. Even wanting to do this here at YouTube, you know, is is a, a bit of an, an an outreach for me to a, a new generation or the next generation of artists and and filmmakers. Um, and uh, I'm just trying to figure out how everything that 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 I do is uh, conscious and thought out and of um, some justifiable service to the human family. I, I just got it. Before we get to the last question over here, I just want to ask Will, Philly represent, Philly represent. Oh, Philly in the Yo, building. Absolutely. So what was the what was the point where you said we got to make Henry a a Philly guy. I know, yeah. <laughs> no, you know, for me, that, that, that wait, that was, was that in, we didn't change that, did we? No, that was, that was in, it. Yeah, always think, a Philly. Yeah, Henry was always from Philly. Yeah, that wasn't, yeah, yeah. you know, when I read it, I was like, that's Jerry trying to get me to say yes to the movie. <laughs> You know? We're no dummies, you know. We know what to do. <laughs> yeah, but it was uh, it was already so cool. it was already in there. Well, yeah. thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> I have the last question right here. Is for Clive. Um, whenever we talk to actors about playing a villain, um, this guy is so delicious and sinister at the same time playing Doctor Evil. I wanted to know how it how it felt to take that on, and what it, is it you could have possibly liked. Also, I don't know if you knew Will before, but now you do. Could you please spill the beans on Will Smith and working with him? Don't you dare spill the beans on Will Smith. Please, this is the press. You have to tell the truth. Um, it's funny, because when you talk about, like, you know, when people say about playing bad guys, I've, I've never ever approached any character, anything I've ever done as a bad guy or a good guy, or a, you, you just take on the part and... You know, you know, you, you know. Often, the most interesting thing is to play flawed characters, and I just never approach it going, "Oh, how do I play a bad guy?" I look at the guy and look at what he does and think, "Okay, what's the way in here? How, what's the best way of expressing it?" So I don't sort of uh, ever sort of take on a part thinking, "Okay, so I'm playing a bad guy. How do I do that?" Um, in terms of working with this man, <laughs> at the risk of embarrassing him, he is like the the best version of major movie star you could ever come across in terms of in terms of his his acting skills in terms of his discipline his focus his you know we, we did those scenes we walk onto the set and it's incredibly focused and on point and it was just uh, an absolute pleasure he's a hugely impressive guy and actor thank you Clive. thank you thank you all right, one more question. Hold on, really, I want to talk about uh, Clive uh, in terms of playing a bad guy. What what was was really interesting, along with what Clive was saying, is you know 
the perception that, and I learned something about this. I've never, I've never played a character, you know, that was really a, a, a bad guy in that sense. But what was great about Clive's perspective is that there's no such thing as a, a bad guy. He was like, the, the bad guy's the good guy in his story. Right, so <laughs> in the in the bad guy's mind, you're the bad guy, right? So that idea, well, it was a good click for me in the in that in that comprehension, and you know, Clive really pushing to get clear on the point. What the everybody, uh, when you wake up in the morning, you have a point. You know, nobody wakes up and says, "I want to be a bad guy today," <laughs> right? You wake up, and anything you do, however we look at it, and we like. That's a bad guy, right? But in the person's mind, they're, they're doing good. They're doing right. Nobody wants to do bad. And that was a really interesting thing to watch as Clive worked through the character and found how the character was 100% right in his own mind. Okay, last question right here. Uh, well, this is for you. Uh, you said you have been doing, uh, you have been playing Henry, going back and playing Junior. How did you keep at it, doing this every day, the same thing, repeating it same? And the second question is, do you have any advice to your 23 yourself? So, oh, that's interesting. So, what, what, uh, first question, what Aang uh, did that was really great is, um, what, what makes someone, when you say, oh man, uh, he or she's really an, an, an actor's director, is when they understand how to create circumstances for you to achieve the psychological and emotional space that, that they're looking for. So Aang was really good about separating Henry from Junior in the scheduling, right? That I would get, you know, you get lathered up into Henry, and if the shift shift is too abrupt, it get, it, it's hard to get your your mind around it. Um, but so he did a really great job of separating the the time from Henry and Junior, so I could spend more time in one mindset or the other. Um, and in terms of advice to my younger self, uh, that that question came up a lot, and. My, my younger self was um, wildly and in, insanely aggressive. You know, at 23, year old, 23 years old, I was, I was uh, naive and uh, uh, ambitious and aggressive. And there's a power to naivete. There's a, there's, a, there's a power that I'm actually trying to get back in my life right now. So I, I would be asking my 23 year old self for advice more than trying to, because he made some good ass decisions. I was like, <laughs> I wouldn't have done it that way, you know, but he really, he made some, he made some good calls, you know. So for me, just in the last couple of years, I've been feeling trapped by the, the success that I've had and that the decisions and choices I've been able to make have been smaller trying to protect Will Smith. You know, so on my 50th birthday, you know, I was like, F it. And I just jumped out of a helicopter over the Grand Canyon trying to get back to that youthful, uh, fearless space. So I, I would be interviewing him more than trying to give him advice. Ladies and gentlemen, Gemini Man opens October 11th. October Thank 11th. You so Here much, you. everybody. Woo. Thank you so much, Woo. everybody. Woo. Wait, what's all pose? What's all pose? Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? Nice. Hey You Guys!